is it going guys? Linux Slay back with another distro review. Today's distro review will be taking a look at Antergos Linux. Antergos Linux is a Linux distribution that is built off of Arch Linux. So it is kind of like a Manjaro, but that's besides the point. So if we go up here to downloads and gives you the screen that says Antergos, you just want to scroll down. They have two different um, versions here like a live ISO and then a minimal ISO so go to latest install media and this is where you can install here's the minimal and here's the live ISO this is the one that I have downloaded right here I've already downloaded it so I'm not going to download it again so Anergos Linux built off Arch just yeah, just a regular distro. Pretty much all self explanatory. Yeah, just saying it's free. You can make as many copies as you want. That's just the open source nature of it. And yeah, you can dual boot it, but I'm just going to install it in a virtual box. So, with that all being said, I'm going to go boot up a virtual box and do the initial install and review. All right, guys, we are at the boot menu, and I have it in scaled mode, so that's why it looks kind of weird, because it doesn't support the full screen as of right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to start Antergos Live. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it, Antergos, Antergoose, I, I wouldn't know. All right, I'm going to clear this little VirtualBox message and recapture my mouse. I think it just automatically did that. So, we are booting into the live ISO. Don't know how long that's going to take. It looks like it's actually coming up right now. See the mouse cursor. Alright, so right now, see if we, yeah, we could put it into full screen mode and it looks really good in full screen mode. Alright, by default, it booted up with GNOME 3. I like GNOME and it's pretty unique across all platforms. Like Windows, Mac have not don't even look nearly close to this. It's just unique in its own nature, which is why I like it. So to install Antergos Linux, I'm pretty sure you just click the updater and it'll come up with the install for the Linux distribution. I have the slightest clue how to pronounce the name for the installer. All right, here we go. C N C H I. I don't know if that's you're supposed to say it or just give the C A C N C H I. I don't know, but that's what it installs with. So you could try it or install it. I'm gonna go ahead and install, and then English, and then the installer went away. Now it came back. So that was a little weird. I saw something up in this area of the screen saying it and finished updates or something. So that's probably why it crashed or exited. So I'm going to install it again. Pick English. I am not behind a proxy. So looks like everything is all good here. We got all the check marks. You click this arrow up here once more. All right, so I have to find my uh, country or territory. So I need to find English US. Right down here, English United States. And then click the next button. And I automatically picked a decent location that is good enough for me. So I'll click that once more. Now I'm pretty sure it selected the, yeah, it selected the, uh, standard English US keyboard by default so that worked so it looks like here you can install a few different options for desktop environments you can do the base and just yeah it looks like all command line you know command line only you have cinnamon which comes on Linux mint I think yeah they their developers made that you get deep in gnome which is what I'm going to install KDE, Mate, Openbox, 
and XFCE. So I'm going to go ahead and click GNOME. GNOME 3, which is nice that it has options for all that. So we could have additional packages pre-installed. So accessibility packages, if you're blind or visually impaired, probably comes with text-to-speech kind of things. Bluetooth support, Chromium. I'm going to go ahead and select LibreOffice. And then Steam plus Play on Linux if you are into the gaming. I'm not going to install it for this episode. And it looks like it comes pre-installed with printing support, which I do not need because I'm on a virtual machine. So I'm going to click that off to speed up the installation process. So I'm going to click the next button. Then I'm just going to leave it by default, leave the mirrors as they are, click the next. Now we have to erase disk install or we can choose where we want it to install like specifically. But since I only have one hard disk drive I'm going to select that. And then yep currently overwrite everything on the drive I don't think there's anything on it. And now we verify. Everything looks right. Yep, GNOME. LibreOffice Chromium. Yep, everything looks correct. So I'm going to confirm. Now here's where it wants us to put our name. So I'm going to put that. That as my host name. Pick a username. Just plain and simple. And then my password, I'm going to put a very secure password. I'm saying it's too short, but I'm going to save it anyway. Alright, so it looks like it is downloading right now. So I'll get back to you when that is complete. Alright guys, it looks like the installation is complete, but um, it, something got messed up. Like it, it froze because it, my computer went into sleep mode or something because it took a really long time. But it did that after it installed, so... The virtual machine just kind of locked up. So I'm going to have to like reset it the hard way. Hopefully it doesn't screw anything up. But I don't imagine it would. So yep, we got our boot screen. And then I'm actually going to boot from the hard disk. Yeah, here we go. So it did, it did work. I'm going to keep it in this little tiny window because it automatically recognized guest editions when we uh had the live image so it should automatically pick up and it should just pick up the um full screen mode momentarily yep so here we go resolution looks kind of weird um don't exactly know how to log in up here we have different options for desktop backgrounds it looks like yeah we have different like lock screen on um, that we just click that yeah we just click the time type in another very secure password so Antergos Linux is logging us in right now oh yeah okay so the full screen did work. Now this bar down here is just a virtual box, so have that. So it looks like by default, here's your um add and remove software. You get cheese. It looks like it comes with a custom icon pack as well. Because that's not the default icon for that. Our LibreOffice down there. We get evolution as our email client. Deconf editor. They don't have this in the best order. Some more LibreOffice stuff. Pulse audio volume, it looks like. We get a password manager, I think. Yeah, I think we get a password manager. I hope it's encrypted, by the way. If you do plan to use this, it, I hope it's encrypted. So, 
transmission. I don't. Even, I forgot what this was for. Oh, it's a file sharing program. So you get that. This is just all default programs. Tweaks. That's GNOME tweaks. So we will get to that later on in the video. Software updater. Let's take a look at the settings really quick. Get into the. Get into configuring and personalizing. So GNOME isn't the most known for customizing. So we should get the same same choices as before. I'm gonna pick this wood grain one as my background. Looks pretty neat, pretty high resolution, pretty nice looking background. Oh, I forgot to mention that Chromium comes by default. Not Firefox, it comes with Chromium. Brazero is your um is your disk burning utility if you want to burn a CD or a DVD Brazero is where you're going to do that all right I kind of got off track there let's go back in uh, your the settings here full screen this all right so notifications you can pick which applications or packages you have installed give you notifications like if you use evolution as your email client which comes by default well at least on the gnome one I don't I don't know if it's different for the different desktop environments but for if you pick gnome and you want notification for your email you just leave that on but for stuff like um files if you don't if you copy and paste it and keeps popping up notifications you don't want that you could click here and turn off the notifications you could have notification pop-ups on or off if you just want to mute all those if you're pretty uh, security conscious and you don't want lock screen notifications there you go it looks like your settings apply instantly so you don't have to keep clicking apply which is nice we did the background Bluetooth there is no Bluetooth but if you have um, a laptop that has Bluetooth support or a desktop and you want to use like Bluetooth headphones there you go region language I'm gonna leave this all alone but you could reset your language if you pick the wrong one that's nice universal access if you have like hearing imparities or you can't do something and you need like you need sound key screen reader all like text-to-speech kind of stuff large text so that just make the text really large. So that's where all that double click delay, how fast the system will recognize a double click. And that's where you do that. I'm going to leave that default. Online accounts. If you want to hook up a, uh, a account, there you would go right here. Add an account. Privacy. Screen lock location services. Usage and history. Let's turn that off. And then purge and trash temporary files. I'm pretty sure this is a tra like the if you put something in a recycle bin or trash can, it would be here. Move a microphone a little bit. So it looks like it automatically gets rid of the trash and temporary files after 30 days. So you can have it do it every one hour if that's what you're into sharing and settings exited okay let's go back to sharing and see uh, this is um really weird actually settings does not want to open up so I don't think it liked me clicking on sharing so yeah it kinda crashed maybe later on in the video if we get back to there let's check out the um, software center alright so it looks like this is where you would uh, install something yeah so if you want to install software and you're not used to the command line, you can search something up here. 
That's um. Yeah, so if you want to install this game, you click that, and down here you click apply, and it will install. I don't know if it does it with the Arch user repositories or not. You might have to install something else for that, but this takes it directly from the uh, community. So it looks like we have a lot of this stuff pre-installed. Um, updates will be managed here as well. So that's all up to date because it was a net installer. Well, net, it downloaded the packages right off the internet. So there's that. Um, it is based on Arch, so if you needed to install something in the terminal, it will just pacman s. Then I'm just going to download the screen fetch utility again. And I accidentally did not type the password. The very secure password. So it looks like I couldn't find it or something. So if you wanted to install a package, it just pacman s. And it has to be run as super user. Which it looked like it automatically ran as super user when we ran the command. So your document viewer to view your PDFs is all here. Let's go take a quick look at system monitor. I have around 6 gigs of RAM allocated as virtual machine. So let's see how this is um, holding up. Looks like using 1 gig at idle of, um, of RAM. Looks like it's using only 1 gig out of the six which is still pretty high just at idle and our CPU is just fluctuating I don't remember how many cores I allocated to it our file system should be pretty self-explanatory yep so it is a heavier heavier desktop environment let's take a look at this deconf editor I'm not exactly sure how to use how to use um the deconf editor so if you are familiar it is there so um, I think that's a chat we get LibreOffice I picked that in the D, uh, the um the install so here we are in the gnome tweaks you will not get this in the other um the other desktop environment options so animations if you're running on a limited resource system you might want to turn off animations to help your system run a little quicker and then suspend laptop um suspend when laptop lid is closed i'm not on a laptop so click off on that appearance so pick um, a different cursor I don't think we have any others installed so all that is just adjustments for your uh, for your like icon themes and whatnot so I changed it to a different icon theme yeah I changed it back so that's how you change your icon themes right there. So that is nifty. Another quick little uh, extensions tab for other stuff. Looks like you take screenshot uh, window resizers. Resize windows for GNOME software screenshots. So that is pretty nice. So if you want to get that one window now workspaces I'm not a big fan of multiple workspaces so I would turn that all the way down but yeah so this is Antergos Linux it's built off Arch rolling release so I picked the GNOME desktop environment that came with a couple other ones like Cinnamon just a plain no desktop environment so you're working right off the command line and um, XFCE was on there, KDE was on there, and I don't exactly remember the rest. So, built off Arch, uses Pac-Man, 
I picked LibreOffice on the install, so that came because I picked that. And a lot of this other stuff looks like GNOME kind of stuff. So it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of bloat installed. What is this? HTOP. Oh, that's another, uh, looks like the command line top utility. It is a command line top utility. Yeah, that is, because that opened up a terminal. So that's a terminal based processor, uh, process viewer. Comes with Chromium as your, um, your web browser. And yep, not as much bloat as some Linux distributions, but I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you have a Linux distribution you want me to take a look at, please leave it down in the comments.